Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org. Since we've been talking about headphone measurements quite a lot on the forums lately, I thought I'd show you some PowerPoint video slides from a talk I gave a couple of weeks ago at Alma International's annual conference. Now, for those of you not familiar, Alma International is the International Association of Loudspeaker Manufacturing and Acoustics, and so the audience for that talk consisted mostly of audio industry acoustical engineers. Now, one of the primary points of my talk was to encourage manufacturers to strongly consider publishing their own audio measurements, given that audio enthusiasts are so increasingly eager to see measurements, so much so that they'll generate their own measurements to get them. Now another part of the talk, and this is the part I'm going to go over briefly in this video, was showing these engineers how we do headphone measurements at HeadFi HQ. I'll say it, I was very nervous. There were many engineers in the audience from many different companies, including several engineers from Audio Precision, Harman, Knowles, Gross, Bruin Care, and many other companies. Sean Olive of Harman, a past president of AES, and Dan Foley of Audio Precision, the current president of Alma, were also in the audience. Like I said, I was nervous, but thankfully it went over well. Now with that, let me give you a brief overview of some of the video slides from that PowerPoint presentation that covered how we measure headphones at HeadFi, and more specifically, how we place the headphones on the measurement fixtures, because that's a critically important part of the process. In this slide, we're showing just a general shot of the audio measurement area here at HeadFi HQ. This is the inside of the Herzan Acoustic and Vibration Isolation Enclosure, and the measurement fixture inside at the moment is the Gross 45CA, affectionately known in the industry as the Hammer. Without the headphone on it, you'd see that the 45CA has ears sticking out of it, inside of which are Gross's new high-resolution ear simulators. I'll say a little bit more about this fixture later, but I do want to mention now that the 45CA was used by Sean Olive and his colleagues at Harman as they worked on their headphone target response research. Now we're just panning through the general measurement area. That's the Gross 45 BB12 Keymar. It's a measurement mannequin with very specialized ultra-low noise ear simulators inside. We'll talk more about those another time, and we'll also show you more about Keymar momentarily. Now continuing through, you see the Audio Precision API APX1701 and the Audio Precision APX555 audio analyzer on the bottom. The APX555 is the quietest, most precise audio analyzer available today, and it's actually really quite enjoyable and fun to use. Now on the display there, it's showing that a noise signal from the APX555 is being played through the headphones. I'm going to show you a more detailed view of the APX real-time instrumentation that we use as we place the headphone on the fixture for measurement, so in a minute or two you'll understand a little bit more about what's actually being shown on that display. In this slide, you're looking at the Gross 45CA with its previous standard measurement pinna. This is still what most measurement pinna are like, and you can see how they can present some challenges for headphone placement, especially for on-the-ear or super-oral type headphones and also for anatomically shaped in-ear monitors. You can see in this shot that the on-the-ear Odyssey Sign headphone is not seated very realistically due to the stiffness of the measurement pinna. Again, this is what most measurement pinna are still like. Also, what you don't see is that this pinna assembly has a very straight, not very realistic cylindrical canal. However, there's a new generation of measurement pinna that addresses both of these issues, which brings me to the next slide. In this slide, you're looking at the new anthropometric pinna from Gross. In the video on the left there, I'm showing how much more compliant, how much more human-like the new anthropometric pinna are. They now compress much more realistically against the head for a human-like fit. You can see in the photo on the right that the Odyssey sign is now seated as it is on most actual humans wearing the headphones. Also, what you don't see is that the canal is now based on actual human canal scans and is anatomically shaped to allow proper and more realistic fit of anatomically shaped in-ear monitors. I'm talking about the ones with angled nozzles. On the more typical measurement pinna, measuring those types of IEMs with the straight canals can be challenging and sometimes not possible at all. Because of this, these advances with the new types of measurement pinna are a big deal. In this next slide, I'm showing what it's like placing a headphone on the Keymar measurement mannequin. As I said earlier, you've probably seen Keymar before, but again, this one's quite different than most. It has the new anthropometric pinna, and it has Gross's ultra-low noise ear simulators that I mentioned earlier, and those simulators are worth talking about down the road. What I'm doing here is illustrating the dimensional limitations imposed by a more human-like test fixture. When you hear the word limitations, it's often associated with something negative or bad. In this case, though, I think it's mostly a good thing. Like other measurement mannequins, Keymar adheres to international standards as far as representing median human head and torso dimensions, which I think are primarily defined in ITU-TP58. The dimensional limitations I'm talking about are pretty well illustrated by the headphone I'm fitting on Keymar in this video. Because this headphone is so large, if you go too far back, you can break seal as the curve of the back of the head comes into play. If you go too far down, you can break seal too. Too far forward, the same. These limitations are actually quite realistic and help guide placement of this headphone within a limited, more realistic range. Realistic placement of the headphone over the ears and the ear simulators inside the head is critical. As you go higher up in frequency, as wavelength shortens, positional changes, even small ones, can have dramatic effect on the high frequency response. In this video, I'm trying to show the limited range of movement for this headphone that still maintains a seal. So again, I actually like using a more human-like mannequin for measurements for these reasons and for the results that we've gotten. That said, it can take a bit more time to finesse placement on this more human-like fixture. 
In this slide, we're now looking at the Gross 45 CA, the hammer. Again, under the headphone are pinna and ear simulators, as in Keymar. This fixture also has human-like dimensions, at least in the way of head width and head height. What I'm showing you in this video is the wide range of movement, a much greater range of movement than with Keymar, where seal is still maintained. Is this a good thing? Not always. When you have this much latitude, then you have to know where proper, more human-like placement is. And that actually was helped along a great deal by our experience with Keymar. So the ease of getting a seal with the 45CA is great, and measurement workflow is faster for sure, but the caveats are that you have to understand the range of realistic placement with it, and sometimes base can be slightly exaggerated due to such easy sealing on the flat cheek surface. Again, with our Gross 45CA, we've updated the pinna to the new anthropometric pinna, and also updated the ear simulators to Gross's latest high-resolution ear simulators, the Gross RAO401. Okay, let's get into the actual headphone placement now using multiple real time instruments that Audio Precision's APX analyzers make rather easy to do. On this slide, you'll see me turn on the 30 hertz square wave signal. The use of square waves is certainly not unique to us, it's actually quite a common tool for headphone placement. However, we came up with a placement technique here that we hadn't seen anywhere else that takes advantage of square wave harmonics. I encourage you to look up square waves and harmonics online to learn more. So here we're running a 30 hertz square wave and you can see that it gives us energy to work with all the way through the audio band. Here the FFT is showing the spectrum from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz on the right. Now I've zoomed in on the X axis on that FFT monitor on the right to go from only 2 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz. That is, I've shortened the range to focus only on the spectrum above 2K. Because we have more of a focus on the higher frequencies, we can see the left and right channels and get some idea of how close they are or are not in terms of symmetrical placement. Just for the sake of this video illustration, let's say I've gotten close enough on the FFT with the square wave. Let's now switch the signal to noise and you'll see that the picture becomes even clearer here on the right. I should note that the FFT settings I usually use for this are an FFT length of 8,000 points and 10 averages. For the sake of this illustration though, I'm going to go with only 4,000 points and 3 averages so that the FFT is even faster for you. Now what we're doing is making small positional adjustments of the headphone to try to achieve symmetry between the channels. We'll usually place one channel and move the other to match. I want to emphasize though that these are very small movements, typically a half inch or less in any direction, and usually mostly backwards and forwards because we of course set the headband to the same length on each side and center it for each seating. Again, with high frequencies, small movements can yield substantial changes in high frequency response. Anyway, now we're approaching a reasonable symmetry. So we're going to soon accept this as a seating, and then we'll do the sweep. OK, now we'll run the sweep, and you'll see the result. We were moving rather quickly through this while shooting, but if the headphone has tight enough channel matching, and this headphone generally does, we can get even closer symmetry than this before each sweep. With Audio Precision's APX audio analyzers, we can glean a lot of information from this one sweep. We can see total harmonic distortion, distortion product ratios, impulse response, phase, frequency response, of course, and a lot more. Now, being able to measure both channels at once is very helpful. And using this placement method, we've been able to do this with consistent symmetrical placement. Again, as long as the headphone has tight enough channel matching to allow this. As I said earlier, how the headphones are placed over the ears, the ear simulators, has a significant impact on the outcome of the measurement. Well, I hope you found that interesting. For the past three years, we've been very lucky to have almost constant contact with a lot of audio engineers, electronic and acoustical, and audio measurement engineers, these people serving as mentors, professors, idea generators, error finders and correctors, and so much more. We're learning every single day, and we'll continue to pursue the latest and most advanced audio measurement know-how and technologies in the coming years. Of course, more than anything, trust your ears, but if you find audio measurements interesting, do stay tuned, as we're only just beginning here at HeadFi.